Hello, I'm Barbara Lucas, and welcome to The Green Room, a collaboration between the Washtenaw County Office of the Water Resources Commissioner and Ann Arbor CTN Television. Today's show is about a walk I took this summer with Ron Gamble, a local naturalist. We went to the Cache Headwaters Preserve, owned by Washtenaw County Parks, to hunt for winged insects such as butterflies, moths, and dragonflies. I've always loved these beautiful creatures, but didn't know what to look for, where, or when. To get started, I asked Ron about how many different butterfly species might be seen at the Kosh Headwaters Preserve. I would guess 20 for just at this part. It's been some years when I've helped a group with the North American Butterfly Count, and that day we'll have about eight, six to eight people looking at different areas in a, in a region of the county, and we'll get 40 to 45 species. I had no idea there were so many species in our area. Apparently, where you look and when you look makes a difference. For instance, in the woods in winter, you can find butterflies, something I never knew. One thing about the woods and woody areas, there are some butterflies. You could see a morning cloak or the question mark commas, and those three, and there's a couple other ones, but they overwinter as adults. So if you're out walking around in February on a nice sunny warm day, oh, I can't believe there's a butterfly flying there. Odds are it's a morning cloak or a comma or a question mark. And the comma and question mark look a lot alike. And um, sometimes you just have to be satisfied that it's one or the other when you're looking at them, if you didn't catch it or until you get really good um, looking at them. Um, so a lot of those kind of butterflies, these close focus binoculars, these will focus up to about 15 inches if you want them specifically for close focusing, like for dragonflies or butterfly identification, um, these are really helpful and are fun to have. I asked Ron what time of day might be best for butterfly hunting. Um, be best after, say, 10 o'clock. You need the sun to come out, not be too windy, and to let the dew evaporate off the grass and the vegetation, because otherwise the the butterflies tend to just hang out in the vegetation or they're under the leaves on the trees. And if it's real chilly, they won't fly anyway. And if it's windy, they just sort of go and, and hide. This walk was around noon on a hot day. The butterflies were definitely warmed up, flitting fast. And I just saw a butterfly fly through here, but... Oh, I, darn it, I missed it. A pearl crescent, probably but it was flying so fast. It, they're not letting us get close to them. Um, Good but, reason to bring binoculars. Yeah, yeah, and that is, you now that's the, that's a beach beaten up. Not, not gonna even get, let me get close. But some I did get a good look at. Oh, right there, right there. Oh, that's the giant swallowtail there. Oh you, yeah. You can tell the difference between that and the black swallowtails and the spicebush swallowtails because you'll see the big yellow line that goes across the middle of, of that butterfly's wings. And if you look at pictures in the books, you'll get the idea what I'm talking about. But so you can see that great big yellow band that basically I think it's on top of where his thorax and abdomen come together. And you can see how he's yellowish underneath. That's one thing to help separate them, but, but um, to split them between the black swallowtails and the spicebush swallowtail. Now there's a pearl crescent right there. See that orange and oh, black yeah. on the ground? Oh, yeah. It's a little small orange and black and white butterfly about the size of a quarter. Some common ones neither of us caught a glimpse of, but Ron described them to me. Um, the banded hair streak is one that, that you can find if and you have milkweeds in bloom, sometimes you'll be six or eight of them on a milkweed wow. flower. And huh. Another one people see and they'll ask me about, they'll see it in their flower gardens and stuff, is silver spotted skipper. You'll see the brown butterfly flying around and, and you'll notice this white spot on its rear wing. It's about the size of a pencil eraser. And like it's a no doubter when you see that, it's silver spotted skipper. Some that Ron saw, I missed and looked up later. The internet's a great learning tool. Uh, now that, that, that was a red spotted purple that flew through and that's another one of the common ones that you could see out walking in an area like this. And that yellow one that flew through there, that was what's called 
Well, their name now is clouded sulfur. When I grew up, we were calling them yellow sulfurs. That was a great spangled fritillary. Okay. Um, you could tell a bird had tried to get him because the back part of his back wing had a big hunk out of it. Mm. Now, that, that was a little eastern tiger swallowtail that just flew through. And it, it went through fast and it's clear over in the tree line now. Um, but that eastern tiger is a butterfly that if you go out very often, you will see them because they're, they're common. Over there. What's it called? Cabbage white. Uh, cabbage, it's non-native. Um, it's everywhere. One of the most common butterflies you'll see. And you'll see them spring, summer, and fall. I get them in my garden, I think. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Probably most everybody does. There's somebody there. Now that's a great spangled fritillary, two of them. Um, and that's another one of the common butterflies that we'll see. They flew down that way. Okay. Um, one thing, I, I see some thistle flowers over there, and thistles are one of the coolest things to watch if you like insects or butterflies or anything else. And, and you just watch what, what comes to the thistles um, because lots of insects and butterflies will use the thistles. Ron taught me that what I thought was a monarch butterfly actually could be its mimic, a viceroy. I wonder how many I've been misidentifying all these years. He says you can tell them apart by their flight behavior, and the viceroy has a black line on its rear wing where the monarch does not. The monarch tends to, when you watch it fly, it tends to sort of flap, flap, glide, flap, flap, glide. And the viceroy tends to be more flying with wind action all the time, like it has somewhere to go. So There's it, a butterfly. Yeah, there, that would be a monarch. Watch it, see how it flap, flap, glide, flap, flap, glide. That, that's a viceroy because you can see the black line on his rear wing. Okay. Yeah. I and see him I'm right. Sure, see if you can get him on. I, I'm sure he won't let me get close enough to him to catch him. Step over in front of me, you'll probably get a better Well, no, I got it. Oh, you got it? Yeah. Okay. A question Ron gets a lot is, what is the difference between moths and butterflies? One, people say, oh, well, moths fly at night. Well, we have some day-flying moths that we might even see today, like the, the Virginia tanuka or the yellow-collared scape. And they, they fly out in the day. How about and the hummingbird moth? The, the hummingbird moth, you can see that in the day. And, and the, um, so you can't really use the, the day or the night. Um, one of the best things to use is you have to look at the antennae. The, the butterflies will have an antennae with a knob on the end, and if it's a skipper, it's going to be bent. Moths, their antennae are typically needle-like, or they have a whole bunch of feathering on their, their antennae. Cecropia, Cecropia moth oh. egg case, what's it called? The, the cocoon. cocoon. Yeah. I've seen those around. They're huge. Yeah, yeah. They'll be like three inches long. They'll be like this big. Yeah. And then the 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 pupa is inside that. So a cocoon's fuzzy, but a chrysalis isn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fair to say. As much as he loves butterflies and moths, Ron is fascinated by dragonflies too. The eastern pond hawk dragonflies are sort of one of my favorites. Um, dragonflies, a lot of them are sort of like birds. The male and the female look different. Um, hmm. The wid widow skimmer is another dragonfly that's a, a nice one to see and find. Of course, you've got the damselflies, which drag dragonflies are separate than damselflies science-wise one of the ways to sort of tell them apart is dragonflies typically land and they hold their their wings out damselflies when they land typically have their wings folded up behind their back so you can sort of tell the difference that way damselflies are very typically smaller than dragonflies um, another thing that's sort of in between called spread wings. So you could guess the spread wings, they probably sit sort of with their wings spread. <laughs> they, 
um, they don't have them behind their back or out flat. Mm -hmm. um, Wow, it's quite a technique. You can hold them by their wings like that. These things are pretty, uh, it's pretty durable. I let the kids feel what the legs, because they sort of feel scratchy and pin-like almost when they grab on you. Oh. Um, they will try to bite, but they can't really get into your skin. Can I they, try? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. The dragonflies are really interesting as, as opposed to butterflies because if you're walking along and, and there was one sitting there and you didn't see it and you skipped it up, stop and wait because on the dragonflies a lot of times they'll come right back to where they were sitting. They'll come right back. Wow, so many things I never knew. Ron's excitement about our winged insects is infectious. Here he is talking about the miracle of butterflies. Totally amazing how the, you just think about what happens in that that pupae it's everything just mixes all together and all of a sudden you get this thing with wings and everything else that it didn't have any wings when it you know went in and made that pupae so it's really interesting on thinking about the complete metamorphosis is what they call it mm -hmm. ron really did inspire me i can't wait until next year when i can go out into more of our natural areas and see what i can find oh it is it's a little giant swallowtail oh yeah well, that's it for our 111th episode of The Green Room to air on CTN television. For over a dozen years, we've brought you shows on a wide variety of environmental topics, most of which are still timely, and all of which can be watched online by going to washtenaw.org forward slash green room. From all of us who've made this series happen, thanks for joining us. It's been a great run.